What it do, Flight Crew? FTC. Flight Team, stand up! We got Chef Reacts back up in the cut today, man. We are gonna be making my main favorite go-to food that I honestly can eat anywhere. You take me to the fanciest restaurant, I'ma still order this. And that is my friends, chicken tenders. So we're not gonna be using a pan pasta stove, we're not gonna be using an air fryer, we're using a pro fire, something that you would see in the state fair, something you would see in any type of event or any type of food truck, man. Come on with me. Now, the first thing you're gonna need is look at my new toy. Yeah, now, bro, you don't really need this. You can still use the original pots and pans. You still use an air fryer, whatever you have, you know what I'm saying, at your disposable will. I'm honestly really not even trying to promote it, but I don't gatekeep. This one that I'm using is called Pro Fry. This is like one of the newest ones that came out this year. Next up, you don't need some cooking oil. I prefer to use the Western canola oil, especially when making like any type of fried chicken. Pickle juice, your uh, couple of seasons. You can add your seasons of choice preferred, but for chicken tenders in particular, I don't like them too crazy seasoned, so I just Use the basics, paprika, garlic pepper, black pepper, onion powder, and the salt. But like I said, you're free to use any type of season that you feel like uh, fits your flavor. Uh, you gotta get some flour in the cut, get some buttermilk. You gotta have some sauces for the tennis, bro. If you just eat your tennis straight dry, you need to be a study or something. Get any type of water, not tap water though. Um, and then last but not least, any type of organic chicken tenor. Wash out the chicken, the chicken needs a bath, the chicken needs a shower, you know what I'm saying? And then right after that, I'm gonna go ahead and put it in this glacier bag. All right, everybody, after you wash it so fresh, so clean, clean chicken out, and it is nice and clean. All you gotta do is put it right here in the glacier bag, and I got a bowl right underneath just to capture any moisture if it happens to leak out of the bag, or you can double bag it, whatever you prefer. But similar thing with the fried chicken tenders, man. I'm gonna go ahead and mix it up with buttermilk, the pickle juice, and then any type of water that is not tapped and put it all inside the bag. Don't fill it up, probably fill it up like little halfway mix in between of everything in one bag. And then we're gonna go ahead and put it in the refrigerator. Now you can put it in the refrigerator um, up to 30 minutes, an hour, two hours for the best, best takes. I've heard you can put it up to four to six plus hours. A little buttermilk just like this. I like to just go ahead and use all the pickle juice. Um, if your pickle juice comes in just one bottle, you can use any water that you prefer, but make sure that it's not tapped so you don't have that tapped flavor. So you're just gonna do that for about 10 seconds. And then now, we are gonna go ahead and put it in the refrigerator. I'll see you guys in about 45. All right, y'all, it's been over an hour. I'm about to take out the chicken tender shortly, but first, I'm gonna go ahead and get my Pro Fire set up right here. I'm about to go ahead and put in this uh, Western canola oil. Now, if you can see uh, right there, there's like a line, you know what I'm saying, you wanna kinda reach everything to 350. And also, by the way, that's the same exact temperature that you would set the stove or you would want your cooking oil to be at the temperature of when you're frying your tenders if you happen to do it on a pan um, or anything of that nature. All right, everybody, I just took the chicken tenders that was in the buttermilk for almost an hour and a half, nice and soaked up and marinated inside this buttermilk. We're about to go ahead and mix on uh, hands-on with the flour and we're gonna uh, add the seasoning. You put all the seasonings and everything you want your uh, chicken tenders to taste like all in the flour at once. Mix it up with this so fresh and so clean, clean whisk. And then it should be ready to be in the pro fryer. The pro fryer takes about, I say five to 10 minutes to fully warm up. You also don't wanna leave that oil sitting there because it loses, I forgot that vocab word, but it just loses some type of like, I wanna just say density. I just made up that vocab word, I guess. All right, for the pepper, go ahead and put a good amount like that. Paprika. Now paprika comes off a little spicy to me, so I don't like putting too much. You know, already know I'm gonna do that seasoning check for y'all. The exact amount of seasoning depends on what you like. You know what I'm saying? Usually you do like a teaspoon, a half tablespoon or whatever, but I like to do it by hand. All right, y'all. So you want your seasoning kind of to be looking something like this. I'm gonna go ahead and do just one more round of each seasoning. You should honestly be just set from there. You just go ahead, go ahead and mix it in into that flour. You know what I'm saying? You want your consistency of the flour to still be white when you're done mixing it, but obviously you're gonna see the particles of the seasoning um, up in there. So it takes a couple of seconds. Woo, that makes my nose tingly, boy. Woo! You know that old famous saying, man. Take your chicken tenders out of the bag, and you're gonna do this for each one of them. You know what I'm saying? Give it that last little drip, and just go ahead and put it right in the flour, just like this. Now we're gonna do this with all the chicken tenders and then put that all the chicken tenders all in the flour. Just don't dump the chicken tenders all at once because you don't want that excess of buttermilk uh, to be in there. But that's what you're gonna be basically wanting your chicken tender coating to look like when it's all said and done. Make sure you get, at, like, show all the corners, show all the ends some love. 
All right, y'all. It's about that time to dip the Masterpiece Chicken Tenders into the Pro Fryer. Now, this only takes about seven to 10 minutes. So I'm gonna be sitting here the whole time. I'm not gonna leave nowhere. I'm not gonna take a cheap break. We are gonna be right here. Now, one thing too, also make sure you don't overfill each bin and everything because it will not cook uh, evenly and correctly. But that's the sound exactly you want to hear before you drop the so fresh and so clean, clean tenders in the. All right, y'all, go, go ahead and drop the chicken tenders just like this. And now, word of advice, if you want your tenders to be crispier, keep this open, all right? So we're gonna come back and I'm gonna tell y'all what it's gonna be talking about in about seven, 10 minutes. Make sure you stay away from here too. This is not a toy. This grease can pop back and hit you. So you occasionally do wanna come by and check and make sure all parts of the chicken is getting some love. You know what I'm saying? If it needs more of a um, cooking or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Just even it out on both sides. Damn. Now, I think it's about that time to take it out, y'all. Look at that. Come on, look at that. Talk to me. We not, this is not even an up-close picture, man. Let's go ahead and put it on the, the foil pan. Make sure you steer clear of that drip. You know what I'm saying? That hits your feet. It's done. I'm doing this with one hand, y'all. You know what I'm saying? No cameraman right here, but this is dangerous how I'm doing it, but we going to make it work. Okay. Hey, we made it work. Come on. Come on. Oh, we can't miss the chicken. Look at that chicken. I want to come out. That's crazy, that chicken don't want to come out. There we go. He tried to play me, that chicken ain't want to come out. No chicken left behind. Turn off your pro fryer, safety first, every time you remove anything. And also, free game to you guys. Do not dump this oil down the sink, down the drain. I go ahead and wait about, honestly, a full day, maybe six plus hours for it to completely cool off. Get four grocery bags and put the oil in the grocery bags. Make sure you don't actually spill it on the floor. Make sure you bounce out. Probably get two people if you can. If not, just position it to where, you know what I'm saying, you won't drop, and then throw it out in a regular trash can, all right? The final stage is we're gonna need to check the internal temperature of the chicken. As you guys can see, it is almost past 165, which is the exact where you want to have it um, for a chicken eternally cooked, almost pushing 180. It's probably like at 170-ish right there, but everything looks good to go. We don't have that taste test right now. All right, man, I got two different sauces in it, man. I got my favorite to use on chicken tenders especially, barbecue or honey mustard. Comment down below, what's y'all favorite sauce down below? I ain't gonna lie, I don't got no ranch. A lot of y'all was on my neck the last cooking video that my barbecue was a shooken up before, you know what I'm saying? I tried my food, now it's shooken up. Don't say nothing. All right, y'all, here we go. Chicken center from Dut Reacts. Let me get this little barbecue. I know you heard that crunch. The crispiness is there. Nice and hot. This thing need a focus. Hit the honey mustard. Y'all hear that crunch? Y'all hear that crunch? I know you hear that crunch. Mm. 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 You can never go wrong with chicken tenders. You can never go wrong. You go to a restaurant you've never been to before, just get the chicken tenders. That plain is simple, man. Hey, man, I'm also about to whip up some fries too in the little uh, pro fryer, but these are like homemade, just something you just buy in the store. Have to get some fries, you thought I forgot the fries? Hey, man, be sure to like the video, man. Comment down below what I should cook next, man. We are.